Heineken said in 1960 that it was not going to reveal the third secret of Fatima to the world as expected. And in making that anonymous announcement through a press agency, it referred specifically to, and I think I'm quoting verbatim, the words of the Virgin which she confided to the three seers. So there was a specific reference in 1960 to the words of the Virgin in the third secret of Fatima. And yet the text published by the Vatican in June of 2000 involves a vision of the Pope in white being shot down and so forth, in which we find no words whatsoever uttered by Our Lady of Fatima. None. So already we have a major discrepancy. There must be a text, the one referred to by the Vatican back in 1960, that contains words of Our Lady confided to the seers. There is a discrepancy regarding when Pope John Paul II first read the third secret. This is an amazing discrepancy. It appears that Pope John Paul II read two different texts of the secret, one in 1978 and one in 1981. And it was the Washington Post, the July 1st, 2000 Washington Post, that pointed out this discrepancy. Here's what it said. Contradictory statements from Vatican officials about when the Pope first read the secret added to the confusion. On May 13th, Vatican spokesman Joaquim Novara Valls said that the Pope first read the secret within days of assuming the papacy in 1978. On Monday, June 26, 2000, an aide to Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, prefect of the Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, said that the Pope first saw it in the hospital after his attack in 1981. This is yet more evidence that we appear to be dealing with two texts. Another discrepancy surfaces from Bishop Venancio's 1957 testimony regarding the secret. We know that when Bishop Venancio held the sealed envelope containing the secret up to the light, he saw inside that envelope one sheet of paper. But the text produced by the Vatican in June of 2000 consists of four sheets of paper. So you have two texts, one a handwritten single sheet and the other four pages of handwriting. Another discrepancy surfaces from Bishop Venancio's 1957 testimony regarding the secret. When the Bishop of Fatima held that sealed envelope up to the light, he saw what he estimated to be about 25 lines of text on that single sheet of paper. The Vatican's text produced in June of 2000 contains 62 lines of text, 25 lines in one, 62 lines in another. Clearly, we're dealing with two different documents. There is also a discrepancy regarding where the secret had been stored in the Vatican. We know from press coverage in Parry Match magazine that a text of the Third Secret of Fatima ended up in a wooden safe in the papal apartments in the 1950s. We know this because a picture was provided in Parry Match magazine showing that very papal safe. And yet, the Vatican tells us in June of 2000 that the text of the Third Secret they were producing at that time had been stored in the Holy Office archives, a totally different location. Once again, we're looking at two texts. And finally, the question must be asked, where is heaven's explanation of the secret? We know that when Our Lady spoke to the Fatima Seers, she explained everything that they saw. Even something as obvious as hell, she explained to them. She said, and I quote, you have seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go. Now, it was obvious they had seen hell. They saw souls burning in hell and floating about in the state of agony and yet she explained that to them. But here we have this ambiguous vision of a Bishop of White with angels in, an angel in heaven sending fire down toward the earth, the Pope being executed by a band of soldiers outside a half-ruined city, the Pope processing through the ruins of the city with dead bodies of clergy and laity alongside him, and absolutely no explanation of Our Lady. There were a number of things in that document that gave the appearance of trying to undermine the Fatima message itself and even undermine certain doctrinal points regarding our Blessed Mother. First of all, all Catholics know that the Immaculate Heart of Mary is the heart closest to Christ. There's only one Immaculate Heart because Our Lady was the Immaculate Conception. She's born free from original sin and she, in entire life, she was free from actual sin. There's only one Immaculate Heart. But the June 26th commentary when it mentions Immaculate Heart, first of all, it puts it in lowercase, lowercase i, lowercase h, something Catholics never do. And it implies, it basically says that an Immaculate Heart is any heart that says yes to Christ. 
Now, this not only undermines the Fatima message, but it also undermines the Catholic doctrine itself on the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Second, our Blessed Mother said at Fatima that in the end, her Immaculate Heart would triumph. But this June 26 commentary implies that the triumph of the Immaculate Heart took place 2,000 years ago when Our Lady gave her fiat to the angel at the Annunciation, when she consented to be the Mother of God. So what this commentary does is it takes a prophecy of Fatima, of Our Lady of Fatima, that's supposed to take place in the future, it puts it back, it kicks it back 2,000 years ago so there's no longer a prophecy. This is an undermining of the Fatima message. Another thing, the June 26, 2000 commentary says, and I'm going to quote it, that the concluding part of the secret uses images Lucy may have seen in devotional books and which draw their inspiration from ancient intuitions of faith. Now, this appears to be a subtle way of suggesting that the entire secret of Fatima was not something that Lucy received from heaven, but just there were ideas that came to her while she was reading devotional books. And this is a bogus argument that enemies of Fatima have been using for years to try to discredit Fatima. And worse, one of the most troubling aspects of this entire commentary is that the only Fatima expert that is quoted in the document, so-called Fatima expert, is a priest named Father Edward Donis. Now, Father Donis was a modernist Jesuit who throughout the entire 1940s and 50s and even beyond that, made a veritable career of trying to discredit Fatima. He cast doubt on any revelation that Lucy received after 1917. Uh, he implied that Lucy invented the Fatima secret. And other Fatima scholars at the time tried to convince Donis that his thesis was, was wrong, that he was mistaken. And after World War II, they even invited him to come to Fatima, come to Coimbra, interview Sister Lucy, so that he could check the primary documentation, interview Sister Lucy, and, and get his facts straight. Father Donis refused to go to Fatima, he refused to go to Coimbra, and he, he refused to meet Sister Lucy. And during this time, a true scholar named Father Hubert Jeddon, talking of Father Donis, he says, is this really the mark of a sound critical mind? Yet Father Donis was the only so-called Fatima scholar quoted in the June 26 commentary on Fatima. So it's no wonder that the June 27th Los Angeles Times, a secular newspaper, said regarding the Vatican's treatment of Fatima, it said the Vatican's top theologian gently debunked the Fatima cult. Those in the Vatican who are uh, possessed of this modernist way of thinking feel greatly threatened by the message of Fatima. And since they cannot suppress entirely what the church has approved, they therefore seek to debunk it by uh, putting a new spin on the message to reinterpret the message, to make the message appear to be in agreement with their modernistic manner of thought. The so-called revelation of the third secret in June 2000 was a disappointment to myself and to many people I know because it didn't match the expectation. We were expecting something, a significant statement which would surprise us in a way and would explain why the Vatican had kept that secret uh, under wraps for, for 40 some odd years. And um, what they revealed clearly didn't uh, meet expectations. Obviously, I believe that it was part of the, the third secret, but there was some, there's something missing. There's some explanation that's missing. The question has been asked, was the Vatican lying to us when they released the secret on June 26, 2000 and said, this is the whole thing? I remember a bishop asking this question in Brazil and Father Kramer gave the answer to him, no, Your Excellency, it was by means of mental reservation. What does he mean by this? Well, Antonio Sochi also deals with the same question. And he says that when they said they released the whole thing, 
They didn't say they released it all on June 26, 2000. They released it over time in other places. And so what happened was Pope John Paul II, for example, in, in May 13th, 1982 said, can the mother with all the force of love that she fosters in the Holy Spirit and desires everyone's salvation, can she remain silent when she sees the very basis of her children's salvation undermined? The Pope answers his own question, no, she cannot remain silent. But where did she speak about the basis of our salvation being undermined? It's in the secret. He's telling us that the faith is being undermined, that is from within, and that it's in the secret. In 84, Cardinal Ratzinger himself said, the secret concerns the dangers to the faith and to the life of the Christian and therefore the world. He's telling us that the whole world is in peril and that Christians, meaning Catholics, are gonna go to hell because of faith. they're gonna lose their faith. This is releasing the secret, but they didn't say this exactly is a secret. You have to take their speeches, put them together and figure it out. It's about the mass, it's about the council, it's about the faith. That's what the secret's about, but they dare not say it directly. But they did say it here and there, and you piece it together and you get to know the secret. And so, strictly speaking, well, we did tell you the whole secret, but not on June 26, 2000. We told you pieces here and there, but we didn't identify it to you when we gave you these other pieces that it was a secret. We have another piece of that, which we find, for example, in the Pope's book on May 13, 2000, when he said, the tale of the dragging, dragging, down a, dragging down a third of the stars of heaven. But when you know the reference, the stars of heaven referred to are the Catholic clergy, that's Pope, cardinals, bishops, and priests. And when you have a third of those stars, a third of the cardinals, a third of the bishops, a third of the priests, or whatever actual combination to make a third, dragging down and working at the service of the devil, that's powerful stuff. That's in the secret. And the Pope makes a reference to that. Now, I won't be surprised if the actual text, when it finally does get released, does make reference to the actual passage of chapter 12, verses 1 to 4. In fact, Paul VI, when he went to Fatima in 67, again referred to the same chapter, chapter 12 of the Apocalypse. Why that passage? Every time they go there, they talk about that. It's got to be in the secret. And that's why they can say it's been released. But it's really not exactly what should be said, because our Lord said in Scripture, He said, let your words be yes for yes, and no for no, anything else comes from the evil one. In his book, The Fourth Secret of Fatima, Antonio Sochi, the leading Italian journalist and television host, concludes, there exists a fourth secret of Fatima, or rather, a part of the third secret, evidently what follows the words of the Madonna, interrupted by etc. Sochi's book is a bombshell. This is a leading public intellectual in Italy. He has his own television show. He has personally hosted press conferences for both Cardinal Ratzinger and Archbishop Bertone, who at the time was no less than the secretary of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. This is a witness of unimpeachable integrity. Furthermore, Sochi admits in his book that when he began his investigation, he totally accepted the Vatican Party line on the meaning of the Third Secret, only to be totally convinced that there was in fact a text that has yet to be published. As he puts it in the book, I had to surrender to the evidence. Once he began to study the case, he had no choice but to conclude, as others have concluded, that there is indeed a missing text. And this is a tremendously favorable development for the effort to discover the truth in this matter. But Sochi's book goes even further. His investigation has uncovered the direct testimony of the personal secretary of Pope John XXIII, Archbishop Loris F. Capovilla. According to Capovilla, Pope John's successor, Paul VI, called for and read the contents of this envelope on June 27, 1963. However, the Vatican Commentary on the Vision, published in June 2000, states that Paul VI read a text pertaining to the secret on March 27, 1965, nearly two years later. Sochi recounts that when an Italian journalist Soledeo Ballini asked Capovilla whether this meant that there were two envelopes containing two different texts pertaining to the secret, Archbishop Capovilla replied in Italian, Perla Punto, which translated means precisely so. In his book, Il Quarto Segreto di Fatima, The Fourth Secret of Fatima, Antonio Sochi, a great Italian journalist, who has never been polemical against the Vatican in his previous positions, and who as well is personally known by the currently reigning Pope 
and esteemed by the current Secretary of State, Tarcisio Bertone, 